Dance Boys, and let's hear what he has to say. His name is Dance Boy, and he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Nets boy here, bring your latest and your brand new spanking Brooklyn Nets news. So, what do you guys think? You guys think that was pretty neat? I thought so. Uh, I decided to stop being extremely amateur and start trying to become semi-amateur by actually getting some editing equipment. Um, really, all I have is Microsoft Movie Maker, but uh, I decided I actually use it, um, and so that's what I did. What do you guys think? That is the new Nets Boy opening theme song and opening video. What do you think, guys? Come on. That was pretty, that was pretty fun, right? Um, but anyway, so much to talk about. So, so, so much to talk about here. On uh, What I want to say is the brand new beginning of Nets Boy. Um, so let's just dive right into it. So many things have happened since my last video, which I discussed about the uh, the NBA draft, and that's getting Rondé Hollis Jefferson and and um you know getting uh steve blake who they actually just traded but um you know doing all these fun little things and so on and so forth so let's dive right in the nets entering free agency or entering the regular so the off season had one goal and one girl goal only and that was to get rid of darren williams which they did Woo he is gone and off the team forever and i could not be happier you don't understand. Well, actually, I think some of you do understand. It's no secret that I don't like Darren Williams. Never did. Never thought the guy was really any good. And he comes to the team, and he just was with a capital. And the Nets couldn't find anybody to take him because of his god-awful contract, which, by the way, dollar for dollar is probably one of the worst contracts in the history of basketball. Um, I mean, not even Joe Johnson's contract is as bad because Joe Johnson at least made clutch shots and still was you know, relatively productive. Um, but so the Nets had to buy him out. Uh, I believe they paid $27 million to buy out his remaining $43 million, and they're going to expand it for the next five years. Ultimately, the Nets are going to be saving $15 million this year and $16 million next year in cap space, which got them under the luxury tax that they were trying to get under. And ultimately, is going to set them up to have a lot of space at the end of this season. So I think it's a good move. Now, look. The Nets are kind of in this weird situation. They can't really get worse and tank or anything because of the fact that, well, they don't have a, their own first-round draft. Actually, they don't have a first-round draft pick at all next season, this coming uh, draft. So tanking this year is not going to do anything. So basically, the Nets have to just kind of think future. So we saw that when they got Rondé Hollis Jefferson. You know, they let Allen Anderson go, which got me upset. Um, and more recently, they let... Mirza Toledovic go, which really, really upset me even more, especially Nets Dog. He was crushed because, you know, Nets Dog's favorite player was Mirza Toledovic. Um, but we'll get all into that in a, in a second. But back to this Darren Williams deal here. So they let Darren Williams go, and, um, you know, they buy him out. And he's going to most likely sign with the Mavericks. And look, the Nets without Darren Williams are probably going to be a slightly worse team, but they might actually be better. First of all, Jarrett Jack has proven last season that, not that he's a great starting point guard, but he's a capable starting point guard. Because remember, he played a bit of games when Darren Williams was out, if you remember that. Um, and he did well. I think he averaged like 16 points and like 6 assists or something like that, which is, was pretty good. Um, he also does pretty well in a pick and roll situation. So I think you're going to see a lot of Jarrett Jack, Brooke Lopez pick and roll type game, which I think is... The strength of the Nets. We saw it last season. It was really how the Nets got going towards the uh, during the season. I mean, during, excuse me, during the end of the season. And I think it's something that uh, they're going to look into more and more. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty cool, right? That's pretty neat. So, I'm okay with it. Um, they also said that this means that they're probably going to hold on to Joe Johnson now, at least for the beginning portion of the season. Now, I'm okay with that, but I was really playing around with a lot of trades. If you actually remember, I was uh, from my last episode, I said that this episode is going to be more about some of the moves I want the Nets to do. But I got a little sidetracked, you know, editing this awesome intro that you just saw and, and, and my day job and stuff like that. And I kind of realized, geez, you know what? Um, they've made a bunch of moves before I can even tell them say what I really wanted them to do. 
So I figured, let's just have this video be more or less to talk about the moves the Nets made over the offseason, or during the offseason. Offseason's still going on. They can still make plenty of moves, including possibly trading Joe Johnson. But they, the, um, Billy King has said that they don't really want to trade Joe Johnson now. They want him to be the veteran leader of this team. Now that they're under the luxury tax, they want to be as competitive as possible now. And Joe Johnson, Brooke Lopez, Thaddeus Young, and Jared Jack, those guys are going to make him as competitive as possible. So trading Joe Johnson, unless you get something good in return, doesn't seem like a smart idea. So, uh, but if you, let's look at the total picture. D. Will out, Jared Jack in. Then they traded Steve Blake for, um, oh, I forgot who it is. Somebody completely irrelevant because he's not going to play. Uh, the Nets are going to probably just buy him out because he's, not buy him out, uh, release him because he has a non-guaranteed contract. I actually don't even remember who it is. Whoops, that's how irrelevant it is. But the Nets did that trade. Um, and then, so the Nets did all these moves. They actually uh, signed Willis, Willie Reed. Willis Reed? Willie Reed? Willie Reed. Um, to a summer league, after a summer league contract to a full season. Um, but they also let Corey Jefferson go. Um, but then they also brought in Thomas Robinson and Shane Larkin. So it was uh, so many little moves the Nets did. So let's, let's narrow this one at a time. Let's start. Hold on a second. Nets talk. That is not food. Sorry, Nets dog is down here chewing on a pencil. He's all discouraged. Like I said, neither Toledo, but she's gone. So once again, let's break down every single thing the Nets have done since the trade deadline. Excuse me, since the um, draft. So, Nets dog? No. I'm still going to try to do these all in one take, even despite having editing equipment, because I think it's still more fun that way, right? So... They go, and after they they traded for Rondé Hollis Jefferson, and um, they trade away Mason Plumlee, we all know that, and Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Steve Blake. They end up trading Steve Blake to get a player who they're just going to do be as a salary dump, which is fine. They then let Mirza Toledovich and Alan Anderson go. Alan Anderson signing with the Wizards, and Mirza Toledovich signing with the Suns. So that's a disappointment. Um, but they also, though, signed... Thomas Robinson and Shane Larkin. Now, Thomas Robinson, as we all know, is a guy who the Nets tried to get last season and fell through by the hands of the 76ers. And Shane Larkin is going to be probably a solid backup point guard. So, obviously, Jared Jack's going to start. Shane Larkin is going to uh, be their bench guy. Um, they also um, signed, like I said, uh, uh, Willie Reed. Is that it? I can't remember. Is it Willis Reed or Reed? Is it Willie Reed? Uh, to extending his contract, but they let Corey Jefferson go. Um, so they have let that happen. And then the big signing, I guess, for the Nets was they signed Andrea Bagnani. Now, that could be a very solid signing. And they signed him to a, a very small $1.5 million veteran minimum. So I think that's a good signing. Because, look, you lost years of Toledovich, who personally I'd rather have than Bagnani because Bagnardi always gets hurt and stuff, but... Bargnani's the better player if you want to compare their games. He's a little bit better of a player than Toledovich, but because he gets hurt all the time, you know, we'll see. But it's a low risk. So if you look at this Nets team now with Darren Williams gone, which I'm going to go back to that, don't worry, and starring Jared Jack, and, and then, you know, keeping Joe Johnson, Thaddeus Young, Brooke Lopez, Bargnani coming off the bench. They got Wayne Ellington. That's the other signing they did to try to replace Alan Anderson. They still have Boyan Bergonovich. Shane Larkin, Thomas Robinson. I can see what they're doing now. Markel Brown's still on the team. They might extend a contract to uh, Ryan Boltwright, who has been phenomenal in their summer league. I'm all for it. I think he'd be a good backup uh, third-string point guard. You can see this team now take form and what it's going to look like. It looks like it's going to be Jared Jack, Markel Brown, Joe Johnson, Thaddeus Young, and Brooke Lopez as the starters with Shane Larkin, Boyan Bogdanovich. Um, probably Wayne Ellington, I'm going to say. Probably Wayne Ellington. Um, Andrea Bagnati. And the backup center spot is still kind of up in the air. It could be Willie Reed. It could be, you know, it could be Thomas Robinson going small. Maybe Thomas Robinson and Bagnati will alternate between center and four. But I think that's going to be your main Nets rotation. And, you know, and you're going to have players like Ryan Boltwright and, 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 um, you know, you know Willie Re Willie Reed uh, being uh, the platoon players. 
of not platoon players, excuse me, the, the 11th and 12th man on the roster. I, that's what I think is going to happen with the Nets. Um, I really see that being the case. Um, but then there's also Tom, uh, I mean, excuse me, I forgot about Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So you see, it's going to be interesting there. Um, you know, I think, Hond actually, yeah, you know what? I, uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson is going to be the backup small forward. And, uh, you know, I think that Wayne Ellington is going to be him and he's going to be pushed back. But, uh, but the point is, that's kind of the team I see the Nets having. They're going to have these guys, and I think it's going to be a decent team. Uh, we'll see moving forward what exactly is going to happen. Now, there are several, several things I want to go over still. And first and foremost is the Darren Williams thing. This is just absolutely incredible to see Darren Williams get bought out. And incredible in the sense that, like, you almost couldn't imagine it happening. I thought the Nets were kind of screwed with this guy. Personally, I thought that he and Brooke Lopez had good chemistry, but apparently Darren Williams was butting heads with a bunch of, uh, you know, with Coach Lionel Hollins and a bunch of the uh, players that didn't think that he had the attitude and so on and so forth. But you know what? You kind of saw it. You saw it in the playoffs when Darren Williams had that ridiculous game four and made all those crazy shots and single-handedly won, won the game for the Nets and followed that up with the two mediocre performances. You realize this guy just doesn't have the edge. He doesn't. And that's what you need. You need an edge. Darren Williams just didn't want it. You know, there was rumors saying he didn't want to be the guy in Brooklyn. He didn't want to do this. He didn't want to do that. He was just kind of content with his lifestyle. So you know what? Goodbye. Now, look, the Nets are not going to be better than last year. However, well, hold on. Let, let me reword this. They could be better than they were last year. Darren Williams is better than Jared Jack. But Jared Jack is an adequate replacement for now. And I think that the whole chemistry of this team could make this team a little bit better. Not to mention, a full season with Brooke Lopez, if he's healthy, this Nets team is automatically going to be better, in my opinion. Kind of like they were in the second half of the season when, Net, when, when Brooke started dominating. They went 17-12. and 12. So I think him and Thaddeus Young, that's going to be a good team. I think the Nets team is shaping up that they have right now is going to be a playoff team. Not a very high playoff team, but six seven eight seed playoff team because you're looking at veteran president president yeah veteran president veteran presence and joe johnson dominant big man and brooke lopez went healthy versatile player and thaddeus young solid go-to guy and jared jack he made big shots for them down the stretch decent bench play with from gonna get from boyan Bergonovich and andrea bagnani if he's healthy so you see the nets could easily make the playoffs as a six seven eight seed which is what i'm thinking they're gonna do but, look, there's still plenty of time left in the offseason, and there still could be trades that the Nets can do, and that's not what I'm going to go into. So enough about Darren Williams, and you know what? Good riddance. I hope the best for him with, his, with the Mavericks. Not really. Darren Williams' chapter is over. When you look back at it, you have to say what a disaster that was. Yes, it had moments of greatness, but overall, if you want to sum up the Darren Williams chapter, it was crap. So... Good riddance, Dan Williams is gone, I don't have to write another song about him being terrible, and so on and so forth. But like I said, there's still plenty of time here in the offseason for the Nets to make some moves. That doesn't mean they will, and personally, I don't think they will, but there's some trades out there that I kind of would like to see happen still, mostly involving Joe Johnson. Um, obviously, the whole Joe Johnson for Rudy Gay thing that I, I've been dying the Nets to do, that's obviously not going to happen, because a key component of that was including either Carl Landry and Jason Thompson's contracts in the deal. But no, nope, because those guys went and got traded to uh, the 76ers. Not to mention, you can see the Kings getting Rondo and, 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 and uh, you know, and, and trying to keep Cousins and Rudy Gay. They're trying to be a win-now team, which Sacramento, it's not going to happen in that West. There's no way. Look, I know the Blazers are going to be a worse team. And I know the Mavericks are probably going to be a worse team. But no, the Kings are not going to be able to crack into the Western playoffs. Just silly move, but that's okay. Uh, maybe they'll that's will get Rudy Gay or something in the future. But so that's not gonna happen. But there's still some possibilities. And and really the main possibility is this. Joe Johnson's contract is big, so you gotta get some players, but how much how about trading him to the Nuggets for Ty Lawson and uh, Gallinari? What do you think about that? 
It works salary-wise. The Nuggets have already said that they're trying to get rid of Ty Lawson. They're looking to move on from his contract. Gallinari is someone that they're also looking to possibly move. You get the expiring contract of Joe Johnson so you can bill for the next season like they want to do. And maybe, you know what, throw in a player or two, a young player. Why not? They did waive Corey Jefferson, but, you know, trade us. Karasev, I forgot he's still on the team. Trade Karasev. Or maybe trade, you know, a pick or something along those lines. One of your little bit younger guns that you have on the team. Maybe trade away, like the Celtics pick. Because you know what? Ty Lawson and Gallinari with a Markel Brown, Thaddeus Young, Brooke Lopez starting the lineup, that's pretty good. Jarrett Jack going back, coming off the bench. Boyan Boganovich. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Bagnani, Thomas Robinson. Now that is a good team. And so that's what I want the Nets to do. That's what I want Billy King to try to do. I understand you want veteran leadership, but if you still want to be making the playoffs and making better, why not trade for Ty Lawson and, and Gallinari? I mean... They're trying to get rid of, at least they're trying to get rid of Ty Lawson. And Gallinari has an expiring contract, so they're less likely to move him. But it works salary-wise. Like I said, throw in a player or two. Why not? Throw in a young gun or a draft pick. I'm okay with it, as long as it's not Markel Brown. Um, you know, you can even throw in Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. I don't think the Nets will, because they really like him. But throw in either, uh, you know, you know, um, throw in Karasev in the deal, or, or, the draft, or, or the Nets draft pick, or something along those lines. Why not? Or a Chris McCullough. I keep on forgetting he's on the team, too. Why not throw in Chris McCullough? That's a move that I would do. I would throw in Chris McCullough and the Nets. Uh, well, it's not the Nets. The, the Celtics draft pick that they have. Right? Is it next season? Oh, it is next season. They do have a draft pick. It's next season Celtics draft pick. Nets draft pick. Nets Celtics. Celtics draft pick. Chris McCullough and Joe Johnson trade for Ty Lawson and Gallinari and I think that would be a great move for the Nets you, you, you get young you get athletic Gallinari is still like what 29 years old Ty Lawson is a 27 year old great point guard him the, the team would be set the team would be set you don't need to worry hey, look Gallinari he'll be a free agent at the end of the season so if you want to replace him with someone else you can I think that's a great move and I would do it if I'm Billy King I don't know why you wouldn't do it. And I think that if the Nuggets would be willing to do that trade, you do that trade. I think it's going to make the Nets into a top five team in the East because that's a great team. But who knows? Who knows? I don't know. So that is definitely a possibility. Maybe you just, you know, you, you, know, you trade Joe Johnson for Ty Lawson and maybe a few other players. As well, maybe a Kenneth Fareed. Imagine Kenneth Fareed coming off the bench for the Nets. That's another player that the Nuggets are trying to, to get out, to get out of. I mean, this is to me. There's a lot of moves the Nets can do with Joe Johnson's contract, and that's just one of them. You know, another one is maybe wants to trade him to the Pelicans for uh, Drew Holiday and maybe like uh, a Tyreek Evans. You know, those two guys. You know, the Pelicans are a team that's on the rise, and they're looking for maybe a little bit more of a scoring punch. Drew Holiday has been hurt. Basically, he's been relatively irrelevant uh, the last few uh, seasons. You know, why not maybe do that move once again? Maybe throw a draft pick in or, 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 or a young player to try to create some incentive to maybe have the Pelicans do that deal. Drew Holiday, T uh, Tyreek Evans, put those guys into this Nets team. I think that would be a very good move that the Nets could possibly do. So there's a lot of things that they could still do with Joe Johnson. It's just a matter of, Will the Nets do that? Um, the last trade I actually thought would be kind of interesting was involving Jarrett Jack, who the Nets also kind of thought about trading. Um, I think that if the Nets trade Jarrett Jack, you got to get something solid. And one of the things I looked at is trading for Trey Burks um, from the Jazz. Now, Trey Burks, they're all saying he's on his way out of Utah because they like Dante Exum better and they want to build the team around him. And Burks is kind of frustrated that he kind of went from the backup point, I mean, excuse me, the starting point guard to a backup. And If I'm the Nets, I trade Jared Jack, CJ McCullough, and a draft pick for Trey Burks because I think Trey Burks has the potential to be a star player in this league. And we saw glimpses of it, and I would trade away those guys to bring in Trey Burks, and I think he could be the point guard of the future 
You don't need to trade Joe Johnson. You're trading Jared Jack because the contract works. Jared Jack and maybe a draft pick or Jared Jack and C.J. McCullough or, or whatever. Maybe a, Obviously, you need to give a young guy or two to the Nuggets, Nuggets, excuse me, to the Jazz to make the deal really worth it because they are going to give up a good young player. But you give Jared Jack in the deal as well. I think that's a move the Nets should look into as well. And it works salary-wise. So that's just some of the things I think the Nets could do moving forward that I think could really, really boost this team up. Will Billy King do it? I don't know. Um, I think the Nets are kind of planning on this idea of keeping Joe Johnson and uh, Jared Jack, who will be having an expiring contract at the end of next season as well, keeping these guys through next season, letting them go off the books, and then the Nets are going to have about $44 million in cap space at the end of next season, especially with the salary cap jumping up to, I think, $70 million is going to be. They're going to have $44 million of cap space, and I think the idea is the Nets are going to try to go after a big-name free agent. Maybe Mike Conley, he's going to be a free agent. Maybe Kevin Durant. If he wants to leave, is he going to go to Brooklyn? Who knows? Um, but that's also another thing that is kind of interesting. They could theoretically trade for Kevin Durant. Uh, I would trade the whole entire team if possible, focusing around Joe Johnson's contract. Joe Johnson, you know, Chris, uh, Chris McCullough, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, the Celtics draft pick. I'd trade all those players for Kevin Durant if Durant is available. Because let's be honest, right now Durant go isn't going anywhere, but he is a free agent in the next season. If and if around the trade deadline, they start hearing that he might want to leave, which you never know, maybe that's a move the Nets do. And then the Nets do that whole have him sign when he gets here. I do that. I trade away almost the whole team except for Brooke Lopez and Thaddeus Young. I would trade away every other player if they met getting Kevin Durant. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe he'll sign in free agency. Who knows? I mean, he's going to be the most coveted player. Um, but, hey, they could do the same thing for Carmelo. I know uh, Knicks fans are kind of like, what, what? If Carmelo starts getting angry with the, with the Knicks and he wants to be traded, I trade away almost every single player to the Knicks. Same exact thing. You know, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, you know, Chris McCullough, the Nets draft pick, and Joe Johnson, expiring contract, bring in Carmelo. As long as it's not Thaddeus Young and Brooke Lopez, I think that would be great. That's another little fantasy move I think would be pretty neat if the Nets did. So there's a lot of little fantasy moves like that, but... Personally, I do think the Ty Lawson and Gallinari trade is a possibility. Same thing with the Trey Burks trade. They both make sense to me. The other ones are more a fantasy. But the point is, I would like to see the Nets do something to get a little bit better. I feel like losing Darren Williams did make him a little bit worse. But having a healthy Brook Lopez, if he's healthy, is going to make him two notches higher. And I think Jared Jack is, you know, I think this Nets team right now is going to be the way it is. Better than they were last season, but not by a lot. I think it'll be around a 45 win team, you know, a 40, a, I would say a 41 to 45 win team, and be around the sixth, eighth through sixth seeds next season. But you never know. Um, we'll have to see what happens. We'll see if any other moves are made by Billy King. Uh, but ultimately, you're looking at this team forming. It looks solid, and I'm happy with it. And I think it's going to be an interesting next season uh, coming up. But uh, we'll see, and we'll see what else happens. Uh, in the meantime, Hope you enjoyed that awesome intro video. Um, keep your eyes open for any other latest Nets, boys. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, right now, I'm not planning on any other Nets. But you know what? I'm thinking about redoing my top five players in each respective position uh, over again. If you remember, two years ago when I had ever started doing my first Nets, boy episodes, I did my top five point guards, forwards, you know, you know, shooting guards, small forwards, power forwards, and centers. I think I might redo that going into the off season, um, just because it's been two years and things have changed. So keep your eyes open for the next Nets Board episode and comment what you think about the intro and comment what you think about uh, you know those, some of those trades. You know, let's get some interaction going. I got 23 viewers. My last video had 30. I mean, I had 23 subscribers. My last video had 30 viewers. Let's get some interaction. Let's get this big. And, and you know, the bigger it gets, the more I'll be willing to edit and make it pretty neat and maybe have some cool, fun stuff. So, anyway, keep your eyes open for the latest Nets Boy. And um, until then, this is Nets Boy. Thanking the Lord that Darren Williams is gone. And signing off.